How's everybody tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, what the Lord has put on my heart tonight and throughout today uh, is uh, really one word: surrender, surrender, surrender. You know, uh, you know. As I was talking to the guys about their baptism and everything, to to know this right here, if we if we look at the baptism, what it represents is an outward confession of an inward decision. Now, what we got to understand is that decision. As we surrender to the Lord and say, God, you know what? Uh, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. I accept uh, you as my Lord and Savior. You know, what we're saying is, you know, that I surrender. What does surrender mean? Uh, I, I looked it up on the internet. It says this right here. Uh, when a believer gives up his own will, ideals, deeds, to the will and teaching to the one that they surrender to. You know, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 16. Everybody with me? We're going to start with verse 24. I was thinking in that last song, I was thinking, you know what, uh, I wonder if God could sing that song about us. That would knock down walls. That would break through lines. Coming after Him. You know, to, to know that, that as He throws His love at us, how much of our love do we throw back at Him? You know, whenever we come down here to the altar and we pray and we cry our eyes out and we, we, we snot everywhere and everything like that, how much of that follows out the door? You know, to, to where we got some things going on in our life. We got some things that, that, you know, just don't seem to be adding up, just don't seem to be working out. But I can tell you this right here, that if we look at our life, we can see something. We can see some things in our life that, that you know, that we need to line up a little better. That just the same way that, that we sing, and you know, it feels good to sing, you know, uh, the, the overwhelming, uh, reckless love of God. If God could sing that about me and say, you know, the overwhelming, reckless love of Sean, that he'll break down any wall, that he'll cross any line, that he'll come after me with everything in him, that there's no mountain too high, no valley too wide. You know what? You can put uh, the whole earth between me and Sean, and Sean will find a way to get to me. Because that's what we sing about God, right? That's what we feel about God when we close our eyes and we think about this song. You know, it just blesses our heart that we're loved so much. I'm just asking you tonight, can God sing a little bit of that song about you as an individual? I'm asking you tonight, you know, can God sing, hey, you know, that he'll bust down walls, that he'll cross them lines, that he'll climb those mountains. Because it seems to me, in my life personally, because I don't want to step on your toes, but I'll say with me personally, it seems to me that, that he does most of the chasing and I do most of the running. I mean, just to be honest with you, as far as me personally. And God's been dealing with me and saying, Sean, you know what, you need to back up and you need to turn it around. You know, how come if we, if we love him so much, if he loves us so much and we profess to be who we profess to be, how come he's having to chase us? How come he's, he's having to, 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 to chase us and to, to, to bust down these walls that we constantly put up between us and God? You know, it's, I, I can tell you this right here. I don't want to step on your toes. I'm talking to myself tonight. I'm just thinking out loud. So, I mean, you know, if you catch something in it, then, then you don't grab it. But I, I want to tell you this right here, that what God is looking for from us is exactly what we sung about just a few minutes ago from Him. Y'all with me? Y'all ain't mad yet, are you? Y'all mad? Well, let's go right here. It says, Then Jesus said to His disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so much. Lord, I ask you right now to get me out of the way. Use me as a vessel for your word. 
Lord, I just ask that, that you just use me as a vessel to deliver your word the way that it's meant to be delivered. Lord, I ask that you just open our hearts to receive that word. Lord, that not one person that's in this sanctuary, not one person that's watching over any of the social media sites, that they leave here uh, the same way that they came. Lord, we ask that you just help us to leave here in a deeper relationship, a deeper understanding of who we are in you and the things in our life that don't need to be there. I just pray for boldness and courage on everybody in here's behalf. The boldness and courage to be able to to stand up and come down here to the altar when when it's time to say, hey, you know what, that I'm going to get this out of my life once and for all because I'm not going to have a wall between me and my God. Lord, we, we desire, we desire here tonight For you to be able to sing that song about us individually. And to be able to put our name in there. Lord, if there's one here that's lost. Or one here that might have walked away from you in time past. Lord, we believe and I stand together with my brothers and sisters. And we declare in the name of Jesus. That they're going to have the boldness and the courage. To be able to stand up and to be able to, 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 to give their life to you. Once and for all. Lord, we ask this right here, that whatever happens at this altar tonight, or whatever happens in in our seats tonight, Lord, that it don't just happen in here, but we carry it outside of here with us. Lord, we believe that tonight is going to be a night that we can look back on and say, that's when it happened for me. That's when I made the decision. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for all the wonderful things that's going to take place here tonight. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, so I want to read it to you one more time. And Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I want to tell you a story that I heard Tony Evans tell one time. He was talking about the chicken and the pig. Sounds like a joke, right? So there's this chicken and pig walking along. They're just chilling. They're just enjoying their day. They're walking downtown. They, they pass by the grocery store. And that grocery store, they have a sign in the window. And the, the, the sign in the window says this right here. That we are in desperate need of eggs and of bacon. The chicken looks at the pig. And the pig at the chicken. The chicken makes the comment. He says, hey, you know, I got the eggs. You got. Why don't we go in here and help out this grocery store owner? And the pig looked at the chicken and said, are you out of your mind? And the chicken was like, well, what are you talking about? And then the pig began to explain to him, he said, for you, going in there and laying an egg, it's just a contribution. For me, going in there and giving him some bacon, that's everything about me. I want to tell you tonight that the Lord is saying that, that you know, we need to quit giving eggs and start giving the bacon. You see, us as people, us as people, we don't have no problem coming to church. You know, even coming down here to the altar, maybe raising our hand during worship. You know, we have no issue with maybe even a, a participating a, a, a Saturday volunteer day to, to, to rake some leaves or something. But that's not what God is looking for. That's not what God's looking for from you. Here, here's the thing. Is, is let's reverse the roles. And, and what if God just showed up every once in a while in our life? What if he just showed up, you know, maybe every other Monday? Or you know, maybe every Sunday and Wednesday? What if God's commitment to you was just like your commitment to him? I will love you with all my heart. Until it's an inconvenience. I will love you with all my heart until, you know, I'll be back. You understand what I'm saying? Here's the thing is I believe with all my heart here tonight that, that, that I'm talking to some people, whether you're sitting in here, or whether you're watching over the social media, I'm talking to some people that are looking for real godly results in their life. 
Right? Everybody want to see real godly results in their life. Everybody wants to have an encounter that, that will just radically change their life, right? Well, I want to tell you this right here, to, to be able to open the door to that. That God is looking from you uh, as far as in your commitment and your surrender. You know, just, just what He's given to you. He's saying, you know, just the same way that we sing, hey, you know what? You, you'll knock down those walls, you'll cross those lines, you'll climb any mountain. There's no mountain high enough to keep, to keep me away from you. You know what, can we say that tonight to say, hey, you know what, that there's absolutely nothing that's going to keep me away from you. I, I believe that we're running into some issues, though. You know, and, and you know, to praise God, if, if, I mean, praise God with the, with, with the clapping and everything, but... I, I would say this right here, as far as, for, as for me, that I'm going to take a step back. And God, you, you called my number. You've called my card. And you're telling me that I need to look at my commitment to make sure that it's where it needs to be. To make sure that, you know, somewhere along the way, that I've not let this world get in my way of seeing you and being in that relationship that you desire to be in with me. You know, not just a every Sunday and Wednesday relationship, but a radical life-changing relationship to where I wake up that I say hey to God before I say hey to my wife. That when I when, when I go to bed, that, that, that you know that he's the last one I talk to and the first one that that, that, that I talk to when, whenever I wake up. That you know that he don't want to just be a part of the, the crisis decisions in your life, but he wants to be a part of every decision in your life. That he's saying, hey, you know what, that, that, uh, to, that he wants you to be able to surrender everything in your life to him. Everything about your will. Well, Sean, why do I want to give up my will? Because we can go a step further and we can read Jeremiah 29, 11 where it says that he knows the plans that he has for you to give you a hope and a future. To plans to prosper you and not to harm you, saith the Lord. So know this right here, that whatever your plans are, that he has better plans for you. And it might not feel like it right now, but I can tell you this right here, that sometimes it don't feel like it because we're running into a problem because we're, we're giving him eggs and not the bacon. We're saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm just giving you enough to feel good about myself. You know what, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a little money at this, or, you know what, I'm going to go over here and help this little old lady cross the road, or, you know, maybe even help her cut her grass. You know what, I'm going to go over here at Walmart and tell somebody about Jesus. And, you know, all these are, all these are eggs, and they're good. And, and, you know, it is what God requires, but that's not all He requires. That he said, hey, you know, from the very bottom of your feet to the very top of your head, from the very depths of your soul to the outward of your flesh, that if you belong to him, then all that belongs to him. That you know what John 3.30 says, that you know, that Christ must increase in my life and I must decrease. You know, as we read about surrender, you know, I I typed in on on Google, you know, Google's a... uh, Wonderful. It says, what does, I typed in this, what does God want us to surrender? It says, being dedicated followers of Christ takes strength and wisdom. But more importantly, it requires us to surrender control of our lives once and for all to Him. The Lord of all creation. For He is the source of strength and wisdom. So it's saying this right here, that, that surrendering... And I talked to the guys in here for the baptism and everything, and and we was talking about surrendering, uh, you know, and and we really begin to think about what it really means. Let me tell you, if we take it out of the spiritual and put it into the physical, you know, and you think about the word surrender, you know, let's just take the whole spiritual side out of it. Okay, so here we are, let's go back to World War II. When we was in the middle of World War II, and, you know, and then we bombed Japan, and then they surrendered, and, you know, it, uh, and then a treaty was wrote up, and they signed on the dotted line, and they lived according to that treaty. How strong was that surrender? Let me tell you this right here. 
World War II, I think, was in 1944. It was in the middle of the war. It might have been the end of the war. So 1944 to, to now is about 70 years. Some of you are adding it up and saying, Sean, you're terribly off. But I'm close. You know, uh, but, but I want to tell you this right here. 70 years later, one of the things that was put into that treaty is Japan is not allowed nuclear weapons. 70 years later, Japan still lives by that treaty that they signed when they surrendered. Let me tell you this right here. The, the ones that actually signed that treaty have gone on. But you know what? Their children live by the same treaty. Their children's children live by the same treaty. Now let's go back to the spiritual. You know, to know tonight that God is saying, uh, that, that, that you know, when you enter into this and you surrender to Him, that you're signing this treaty, to saying, you know, God, I give up my will and I take on your will for my life. And if you live by this right here, some of you are having some problems in your family. You're having some issues uh, going on uh, uh, with yourself. But I want to tell you this right here. If you live by this treaty, then you know what those kids that you've been worried about, you know that they're going to be affected by this treaty. Their kids are going to be affected by this treaty. To know that everything will turn and everything will turn around. But I'm going to tell you that, that what it's going to have to come down to is, is that you know it's not just about church. As much as we love church and everything, it's not just about church. It's about, you know, us getting on our face before the Lord. And us, you know, uh, getting, our, getting in our word and it's digging deep and saying, you know, God, I want to fall in love with you like I've never been in love with anything. I want to love you the way that you love me. I want to come after you and seek you the way that you come after me. You know what, I want, I want you to really, without a shadow of a doubt, to be able to know in your heart that, that when we're singing that song down here, that you can sing that song up there about us. And when you sing that song about us, you can name our names individually. And you can say, you know, what, uh, uh, there, there's, there's no wall that Sean won't knock down. There's no line that he won't cross. There's no mountain that's going to be high enough to keep Sean away from me. That he, he, and the way that I'm picturing it is like this right here. That he's like, hey, hey, angels, get back. Get back. You know, there's Sean. You better get out of his way. He's going to break your arm to get to me. You know why? Paul, Paul gets a little bit of the idea. Turn your Bible to Romans 8 with me. Let's start with verse 37. Paul says this right here. He says, Yet in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. He says this right here that I'm persuaded. Now listen to this. This is, this is some pretty heavy stuff right here. It says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels. He, he's, he's speaking about the angels of heaven. Nor principality. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. Nor heights. Nor depths. Nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's pretty powerful, right? Amen. So basically... As, he, as he's sitting back, he said, hey, you know what? Here's the thing is I want you to fall in love with me the way that I'm falling in love with you. And, and I can tell you this right here that I, I think about it. Let's go back to the physical a little bit. Get out of the spiritual. We don't want to stay right there. You know, let's, let's, we can understand it a little bit better with our fleshly mind. But I think about when I, when, when I read that, I think about my kids. I got a lot of them. Uh, and it's pretty rowdy at the house. 
But I think about my kids, and I think, you know, and I got this thing that, that I, I go along with, with, with each one of them, you know, to, as far as uh, they're all boys at the house. And uh, so, you know, when one of them gets out of line, I'm like, come over here, we're going to have a man-to-man. And, you know, I have this man-to-man with them, and I'm like, you know, look at me in the eye. Uh, you know, don't talk under your voice. You, you talk to me you talk to me man-to-man. I don't care if it's Jagger, a little four-year-old. And because uh, he'll come in there, I'll be like, what did you do? I'm like, hey, we're having a man-to-man. you got to talk to me like a man. Then, well, I hit Kingston with the bat. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it, it's one of those things to where, you know, but I, I can tell you this right here, that with my boys, that they're precious to me. That they're precious to me. And I can honestly tell you, that when I think about that song, that I can sing that song to my boys. That, uh, that, that you know, that they can sing that song about me too because th- there's not a mountain too high. Uh, you know, that there's not a wall. Uh, there's not a line that, that because of my love for them. Well, you know, now let's go back into the spiritual. You know, that God says in Galatians, it says, uh, you know, it says this right here. It says, uh, if you believe in the Father then you were his sons. It even goes on, some of you are like, well, I might be his daughter, but, uh, but it actually says this right here. It says, there's neither Greek nor Jew, male nor female. It says that you are all sons if you believe in the Father. So now I kind of understand it a little bit more that we went into the physical, that you're not the same way that I am with my sons. You know, it is the same way that God is with us. That he said, hey, you know what, uh, there, there's nothing that you could have did that, to earn this. It's just who you are by your birthright. There's nothing that you could do to say, hey, you know what, that, uh, that you're going to make him love you any less or love you anymore. It's just who you are by your birthright. Now, here's the thing is he stepped into his position in that relationship to where he's loving you the way a father should love. I could, I could actually go a different way with this, and maybe I will. I got, I got a four-year-old, two seven-year-olds, two 15-year-olds, and a 16-year-old. That, those are the ones that's living at home right now. Oh, uh, some of you are thinking, Sean, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a full house. Oh, uh, but I want to tell you this right here. With my four-year-old and my seven-year-old and my 15-year-old and my 16-year-old. That uh, my four-year-old, some of you know him, Jagger. Uh, some of the ladies who kept him in the nursery. He, he's, a, he's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's fun. He's fun. He, he's, a, he, he's a lovable little guy or whatnot. But I can tell you this right here. That I can't tell you how many times a day that I'm his best friend, and I'm not his best friend anymore. <laughs> Some of you ladies have been his best friend, right? And then you're not his best friend anymore. And you know why? Because you didn't give him what he wanted in that moment. You're not, now let's move on to Kingston. Kingston, you know, Jagger is kind of the daredevil who would jump off the, the roof and, you know, to expect to live. Kingston kind of keeps him in check. Kingston's still a little immature. He's seven. He, he, he's still a little immature, but, but, you know, he's understanding a little bit more. You know, uh, he'll still pitch his little fits. You know, Jagger, he'll love on you when, when you're giving him what he wants and you're making him feel good. You know, he'll lay his head right there and say he's your best friend. And, you know, he just wants to live life with you as long as you're giving him what he wants. Now, Kingston will come forth and he'll, he'll do that until, you know... You, it's almost like when you tell him no, he feels like he can use it to negotiate a little bit, push the envelope, and sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. Whenever he realizes it's not working, then he'll abort mission. <laughs> he'll be like, well, you know what, uh, uh, can, can we go outside and play? I'm like, no, it's dark. Daddy, I'm like, please, I love you. I'll, we'll be careful. I'll look out for Jagger. No. Fine, then. <laughs> I mean, so, so here's the thing is you got Jagger, who is, uh, 
You know, looking at, looking at my hands to see what I can give him. If I don't give him what he wants, then he's out. Kingston's a little bit more mature. You know, he'll throw a hug here and there. And you know, he, uh, he, he'll try to, to, to work for it a little bit, work for it a little bit, work for it a little bit. But if it don't work out, he's out. Let me tell you this right here. And then we go to, to, to Garrett. Garrett will come in my room. You know, he'll come in my room and he'll say, what you doing? I'll be like, you know, I ain't doing nothing. Get out of my room. <laughs> I mean, this whole house, you run, do whatever you want to in it, but, but my room is my room. Get out of here. And, you know, he'll, he'll come in there and he'll put his arm around me. <laughs> and I'll be like, what you want? What you want? And, you know, on, on, on some special occasions... You know, he just comes to love on me. And there's nothing to it. Yeah, I know. You're surprised. I'm surprised too. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's one of those things to where, you know, okay, well, you know, something's happening. You know, he hadn't always been this way. He actually loves me without, you know, going to Walmart or he loves me without going to Chick-fil-A. I mean, I don't know. Chick-fil-A is kind of like crack to him. I mean, he's... He, <laughs> He, he loves Chick-fil-A. But you know, he'll, he'll come in there not even ask him for a chicken sandwich, you know? I mean, and he'll just love on me. I guess I said all that to say this right here. And the reason that we went down that avenue is to say this right here. That maybe tonight, as we look at our commitment unto the Lord, and our goal, without a doubt, is... For God to be able to sing parts of that song to us, to say, you know, say your name and say, you know, uh, there's no wall that he or she will not break down. There's no line that, that they will not tear down. There's no mountain that's high enough to keep you away. You know, as we talk about that, as, as God can sing part of that song about you, I want to ask you this right here as we went over just a few of my kids. Where are you at? Which one are you? Now let's go back into the spiritual a little bit. What we talked about in the physical, and you really didn't even recognize it, is a, a, a maturity level. As children, as my children. Now as we jump into spiritual, we're talking about a maturity level as God's children. I'm not saying that anybody in here is not, not God's child. But I'm asking you this right here. Where are we at on that maturity level? You know, what, are we like, God, you know what? I'm going to love you as long as you do A, B, and C. And then as soon as it don't happen at the drop of, of a hat, then, then we're like, well, you know, just forget it. I'm done with this. Or are we like, well, you know what? Here's the thing is I think it's going to take a lot of work and, and I'm going to put forth an effort for a certain amount of time. But if it don't start producing the way that I think it should produce, I'm done. Or are we saying, you know, God, I love you. I love you. And you know what? Hey, it, it can rain down money today. Or you know what? I not know where the next meal's coming from, and I still love you. And you know, to, to be able to say, to be able to say, hey, you know, and all of us, we have different goals in our life. We have different things. You know, you're thinking, hey, you know what? I want to be the best father, you want to be the best mother, you want to be the best husband or wife, or you want to be a business owner, you want to, you, you, you want to be able to pay your finances or have a vacation. And, and we will physically work for these things. We will, we will put forth effort in these things. Some of you are thinking, well, you know, what? I, I, I work at the Honda plant. Well, why do you work at the Honda plant? Because you're investing in your family. You're investing in things in your life. So what you're doing is you're literally spending 40 plus hours a week to invest in these things in your life. Okay, so, so that's important to you, right? And God's important to you, right? So what are we spending to invest in this relationship with God? I mean, and I'm, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to step on your toes. But I... I think if we come away from this service right here with a deeper understanding of, you know, because here's the thing is I believe that you all love the Lord. We all love the Lord. 
But you know, the devil is a liar and he's the father of all lies and he's an ultimate deceiver to thinking that, that we're putting forth uh, that, that real good effort when, when there's other areas of our life that we should be working on too. That, he, that we're, here we are, we're dropping eggs. And, uh, and, and, you know, he's making us feel like that's enough when it's not. You know, when God's saying, hey, you know what, I want the bacon. That tonight is your night. To be able to back up and regroup. And I, I promise you this right here. As we get ready to, to go into an altar call. What is the deal with the hairballs? I want you to stand with me. So, you know, we laugh, we play around, and, and I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. You know, it, uh, it, it's, a, it's an honor and blessing for Pastor Gary to, to allow me to get up here and speak with y'all. Uh, but I want you to know this right here. As we laugh and play around, it, it, it's really about lives. It's about your life individually. That God has a word for you tonight. That you know that as we sung that song earlier. That I believe, I believe this right here. That we can all back up and regroup. And, and I believe that you know if we make the decisions tonight. To be able to say hey you know I surrender everything in my life. And I want to sign this treaty with you Jesus. That it's no longer my will. But it's your will for my life. And the good thing about that. As we've done been promised, he's saying, you know what, I know the, the thoughts that I think towards you. Good thoughts, not bad thoughts. He's got a plan and a future for you. So, you know, here's the thing is, I'm asking you to do something big tonight. But it, it's not, I mean, it, it, it's not crazy in me asking you. Because what I'm doing, is, I'm asking you to give in to God's good plans for your life. You know, so here's the thing is, maybe we've got a little off track here and there. Maybe we've, you know, we've been going and we've been in a routine and, you know, got caught up with, with just things going on in the world. And, you know, maybe we got some things going on in our life. And God is calling us tonight. And he said, hey, you know what, I, I appreciate And let me tell you this right here. Y'all sounded wonderful when we sung that song. Yeah, when that last part, when, it, when Dalton said, hey, you know what, uh, uh, y'all, y'all raise your voice and sing that right there. That, that you know, when you sung that, it was beautiful. But I want to tell you this right here. That God is saying tonight, will you make the decisions that you need to make so that I can gather the angels and I can say, listen to my boy so-and-so or listen to my girl and call you by name and listen to them sing this song to me. So, you know, as we get ready to, to close this service out, I ask you this right here. If you're not completely and 100% surrendered, then, you know, I ask you to, to make those decisions tonight so that that can't be said about you whenever you leave this service. Go ahead, Pleasure. We're so glad that you joined us in service today, and we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, we want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. 
God's word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Teaches us that if we believe He is who He says He is, and He did what He said He would do, that that if we believe that He died on the cross for our sins, and that God our Father raised Him up from the dead, and we profess Him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, praying, if you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. First Kings eight and thirty nine. You know your heart. God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by cho chance happening. You're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, an app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us and we promise you we're going to, to, to put it before folks and we're going to put it before God. And if you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. And if you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today and thank you for, for just being with us and know that, that, you know what, God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day and know that, that you know what, this day is the day the Lord made, so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.